Well, throughout the Bible, we read about miracles happening, these episodes where the normal operation of nature is suspended and something supernatural occurs by God's power. In the New Testament specifically, we read about the life and the ministry of Jesus who performed a number of miracles for a specific purpose. Often that purpose was to show who he was, that he was God in human flesh, and to demonstrate what he came to do. Throughout the four books known as the Gospels, we see Jesus perform all kinds of miracles. He heals the sick, he feeds 5,000, walks on water, gives sight to the blind, raises people from the dead, and of course, the biggest miracle of all, he himself is raised from the dead. And the question that many people, both believers and non-believers have is, did these really happen? Could these stories be myths or legends that aren't meant to be taken literally, but are supposed to symbolically teach a lesson? Could these supernatural occurrences have a natural explanation? Like maybe Jesus wasn't walking on water, but was just standing in ankle deep water near the shore. Or could these have been later made up by Jesus' followers to give momentum to their new religious movement that they were starting? Well, first, I would encourage you to take time to go and read these gospel accounts for yourself. Because when we do, what we find is these miracles are recorded as if they actually happened. I mean, they're not set in some fantasy world, but our world with the same laws of nature, confounding those witnessing it acknowledging that this is not normal, neither in their time nor in ours. We also find that the gospel writers intentionally include these details that are meant to highlight that what occurred here really is a miracle, that it can't be explained by natural causes. But probably one of the most compelling reasons why we can trust that the miracles of Jesus actually happened is surprisingly from his enemies. The religious leaders of the time, the ones who eventually had Jesus crucified, they didn't deny that the miracles happened. If they wanted to end this religious movement, really all they had to do was just to call into question Jesus' power to perform these so-called miracles. But they didn't, because really there were too many eyewitnesses. So instead of trying to debunk the miracles, they focused on trying to catch Jesus breaking certain technicalities that they had added to the Jewish law. We see a great, great example of this in John 9, where Jesus gives sight to a, a man who was born blind on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees said, this man is, is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? You see, the Pharisees were in a bind because everyone knew this man. They knew that he was born blind. In fact, the Pharisees called his parents to come over and confirm that he was in fact born blind, but now he could see. And so they couldn't deny that something miraculous happened and that Jesus was the one who did it. And so they focused on him supposedly breaking the Sabbath. You see, the miracles of Jesus might seem unusual, supernatural, too amazing to be true. But if Jesus really is who he says he is, God in human flesh, should it surprise us that he's able to do the things that might confound us? That if he can walk on water and give sight to the blind and be raised from the dead, he might be God himself who has the power to take away your sin and raise you from the dead too.